Good day. In today's course, I'm going to take you through step by step on how to build a site that looks like this. Media Loot is one of my favorite sites as far as visually, as far as how it works and how it functions. It's very clean. It's a great design. I love Media Loot. I subscribe to their service and I suggest you do too. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not a sales pitch for Media Loot, but I highly suggest you use their graphics because it's really cool stuff. So, my name is Robert Farrell. Thank you very much for being here. If you're watching us on YouTube, welcome. And of course, if you're watching us on Udemy, which if you're not on Udemy, you should be because Udemy is the best place to learn techniques and it has some great built-in interfaces to make your learning experience more enjoyable. You can take notes, you can ask questions to the teacher, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can also download the file to your computer in case you have a bad internet connection. So this is just a quick little overview on what we're gonna cover in this particular course, okay? So we're gonna take a complete A to Z approach, building this totally from scratch using my time-tested simple, simple, simple techniques. We're, we're gonna basically take a screen capture, we're gonna build using a tracing image, we're gonna do all kinds of cool stuff letting Dreamweaver do the heavy lifting for us. So we're going to write all the code needed for the site, but we're going to do this in a simple point-and-click manner without actually writing the code from scratch. So let me just review a few things. So we're going to go through the site with drop-down menus, login forms, etc., etc., etc. I'm going to show you how the whole thing is put together totally from scratch. Now, this particular site is a full-width site, but unfortunately, it's not a fully grid response. So I'm going to share with you some very, very important production techniques, techniques that will save you time and also, of course, save you money because time is money. So let's get started. Okay. When I look at a site that I'd like to either mimic or I like the design of it, here's a couple of things that I do. First of all, I enjoy using Firefox because Firefox has some built-in features that other browsers don't have by default. So the first thing I'm going to do is just examine their CSS. I'm basically going to turn the CSS tabs off and I just want to see that it has a nice flow to it, which means that a properly formatted CSS site basically flows from top to bottom. You very rarely see anything out here. If you do, by the way, that would tell you that this is built in tables and that's an absolute no-no, especially for search engine optimization. So I'm going to go back under view. I'm going to go back to page style. Now the next thing I'm going to do is show you a technique of saving this to my desktop locally and I'm just going to use it as a reference file to rebuild the site totally from scratch. We're also going to take a screenshot of the site and we'll do that as the course progresses. <clears throat> now what I want to share with you is again I am using Firefox. You can, now this also works with other browsers as well but I have this great free plugin um, called Markup. Okay, I'll put a link to how to get the markup plugin. What this enables you to do is basically capture the entire page in a screenshot, and then we can use this as a tracing image to bring into Dreamweaver to build pixel perfect reproduction of the site. So, as an example, this particular mockup, so look at it this way this could have been built in Illustrator or Photoshop or Fireworks, and then I want to take that and convert easily to HTML5 and CSS3 for search engine purposes. So let's actually, the next thing we're going to do is I'm just going to go to the file menu and file save. I'm going to just save this file to my desktop. Now what I typically do, I'm starting out with a pure clean desktop, nothing on my desktop. So here's how I choose to work. On my desktop, I have a folder called websites. I'm just going to type in websites. Now any file that goes to the web should be lowercase, no space. If you have to use spaces, use either hyphens or underscores. Hyphens are preferable because hyphens will be picked up as spaces to a search engine. Then I'm basically going to put in the name of the site, which in this particular case is Media Loot. Now, I just want to be very careful about something. I'm not employing any kind of copyright infringements. I'm not stealing the graphics, doing anything out of the ordinary. I'm just sharing with you a technique of taking an existing site and repurposing, rebuilding it to suit your needs. So we're going to create that. Then we're going to put this in a folder called original from WS, which is original from website. <clears throat> now, again, any file name should be lowercase, no space. So I'm just going to simply call this what it is, which is medialoot.html. Now, pay close attention here. <clears throat> Excuse me. When we save this file, it's going to save its file plus its JavaScript files and its CSS files. 
We're not going to use any of those files. We're going to use this as a reference of possible mistakes that were built in when the site was put together and things not to do using my better proven techniques. So I'm simply going to make sure that you have web page complete selected and I'm simply going to save. And this is going to save this entire file with its CSS, with its JavaScript, with its graphics right to my computer. And you can do this with Firefox, with basically any website. And I'm going to save. So I'm going to clear that. <clears throat> so now I'm going to go onto my desktop. So on my desktop, I have a folder called Websites. And in the Website folder, I have a folder called MediaLoot. And inside of MediaLoot, I have Original from Website. And you can see, here is my file. So if I double-click that, that's going to open up the same file, but it's going to do it from the desktop. So inside this file, it put all the JavaScript files necessary. Now again, I'm not employing taking code or stealing somebody else's work. That's not what this video is about. This video is simply how I can mimic something else that I've seen that I like, that I enjoy, and I want to basically replicate that as best as possible. And these are just simple, simple techniques on how to do this. So what we're going to now do is I'm going to basically go and open this up inside of Dreamweaver. So here is our media loot file inside of Dreamweaver that I opened from my desktop. Now a quick little rundown in here. These are the CSS styles. Now the cool thing about doing this inside of Dreamweaver, unlike writing the code totally from scratch, is Dreamweaver writes code. That's what it does, that's all it does. Now, if you wanna write code from scratch, you know, be, be my guest, but that's what Dreamweaver does. Dreamweaver will write all the code needed to build this site. Now, to also build JavaScript code totally from scratch, you just have to do a little finessing and know how to do it. Dreamweaver has wonderful code hinting for PHP, for JavaScript, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what I'm probably going to pay attention to here is how this was constructed. Now, again, no disrespect and no offense on how this is put together, but if you scroll through here, you'll see that this, if you needed to make changes to this, this looks like a bit of a nightmare. This was not properly put together as far as, you know, the header tag should be way up on top here. I have a bunch of class tags. Everything's just kind of mixed haphazardly throughout the site. Now, again, no disrespect and no offense to the people who built MediaLoot, but if you look at the IBM website, even the Apple website, most of those sites were not properly put together in a logical way. And what I mean by that is now if it's three months, six months, a year down the road, you need to make changes to that site, it's going to be a nightmare to figure it out. So as an example, if I come down here to my, let's go down to my H1 tags that were way down here as an example, right about... Right there, so watch this. I'm gonna double click here. Now, <clears throat> here's a huge issue that I have with this, okay? First of all, the H1 tag, and this is not a sub of an H1 tag. What do I mean by that? This is not an H1 tag inside of a div tag, and H1 tag. This is a root, root level H1 tag. How do I know that? Because it's just by itself. Now, this is just bad, bad formatting because it's, it is by default normal. So it's really ridiculous and bad to actually make this normal because it defaults to normal. So don't do redundancies, avoid do redundancies. Now, in fact, if in fact you want to make your H1 tag different from your default typeface, then yes, I would do that from here. But if it's going to be the same, then I wouldn't basically change it to override my redundancies. So what I mean by that, let's say your body copy was this typeface, a big trap that most people fall into because they don't comprehend and they don't quite get how CSS thinks is they would go ahead and make every single tag the same typeface. Well, it is the same typeface because it's a parent-child relationship. The same thing with the typeface being white. So as an example, if I go up to my body copy, which I assume that's on top, which it is. Now, these are the rules for a whole list of tags. So as an example, if I click right in here, you'll see that this is a whole, this is a whole list of compound rules for all these tags because they're separated with a comma. Now, I am not a fan of doing, this, doing it this way at all. I'm a fan of doing the asterisk tag. Now, some people might think the aster tag is overkill, but the advantage of using the aster tag, in my humble opinion, is that it sets everything to zero. And I'm okay with that because, quite frankly, I can count from zero. I don't want to hand pick. So as an example, out of the hundred and something different HTML tags, this person said, well, I only want to talk to, say, a handful of these tags. So this is used quite a bit, but I really don't like that system. I'd rather use the asterisk tag. So in this course, I'm going to share with you all the do's and don'ts 
how to work smart, how to take it one step at a time. So in our next video, I will share with you how to begin the process of building the site totally from scratch using simple, simple techniques of letting the software work for you. My name is Robert Farrell. I thank you very much for being here. And if you're not part of the all access pass on udemy.com, please contact me. I have super deals available for all the courses that I offer at Udemy, plus, plus all my future courses for one fee. Now, in addition to that, this is these, these couple videos I'm going to share with you for free. It's kind of a primer on how this particular course on building media loot from scratch is going to work. But this is not the full course. It's kind of a teaser of what to expect. But my objective is very simple. I want to make things so incredibly engaging and simple for you to comprehend and understand by getting you to think the way the software thinks. Another thing I want you to really consider is read my reviews. Go on udemy.com and read my reviews. My students love what I do. I have students that have been working in Dreamy for 10, 15 years. They've learned more techniques on how to do this the right way in a couple of videos than they did spending the past 12, 15 years on the software. And I have that same approach for everything I teach, whether it's Illustrator, Photoshop, Maya, 3D Studio Max, Final Cut Pro, After Effects. I'm a total master of everything I do because I've been doing this for 26 years and I'm constantly, constantly, constantly coming up with better, faster, quicker ways to do things. So it all comes down to technique. So my objective is to share the technique with you because I have nothing, uh, nothing gives me more joy than sharing a technique with a student where they can go out and make real world money with this. So again, my name is Robert Farrell. Thank you for being here and I'll talk to you in the next video.